Uh, hello everyone, my name is uh, He Wang. I came from uh, Institute of Theoretical Physics, CES. It's a great honor to have a chance to give a talk on a patch mix that day. Uh, I will talk about our recent works on deep neural networks uh, for gravitational wave astronomy. I will quickly go through uh, what the gravitational waves are and uh, how they are produced and uh, observed by us. Then I will talk about what we are facing, both uh, challenges and opportunities in the data analysis. Uh, this, despite that, we propose our brand new uh, neural structure. We call it match filtering convolution neural network uh, to solve the above problems. Okay, uh, the concept of the gravitational waves go back to Albert Einstein and his theory of gravitational waves, I'm sorry, uh, general relativity, uh, which, is, which he established in 1950. It wasn't until almost 100 years later, and for the first time, a team of international scientists managed to capture these waves passing through the air. Uh, specifically, the weak gravitational wave comes from a collision of two black holes, which is far from our Earth. Because of that, the, no the Nobel Prize Committee uh, uh, has awarded the Nobel Prize to the three leaders of the mm, gravitational waves uh, detection project. Well, a gravitational waves, also the change of the space-time, can be captured by our laser interferometer gravitational wave detector. The picture that you see on the right uh, represents that what we measure is the variation of the distance between the mirrors here. So far, we have a lot of data to analyze this, and uh, we also have observed almost 70 gravitational wave signals. So you might be really curious about how the recording data and gravitational wave signals looks like anyway. Well, on the left figure, you can see the first gravitational signal or the first gravitational event we observe. As you can see that the, uh, we measure the variation of the mirrors, uh, also the variation of the space time by a very, very tiny amount. It's about 10 times minus 21 meters. In other words, a 10,000th of the proton diam diameter. And one more thing I can tell you, uh, that's usually the signal is 100 times weaker than the background noise. So you definitely understand that gravitational wave data analysis is a crucial and essential part for us to find the gravitational wave signals. Well, how uh, how we find the signals anyway? Typically, we use match filtering technique. However, it works optimally only on the Gaussian and the stationary noise, a background noise to extract uh, weak signals. And you also need to prepare a known signal, uh, a known template bank uh, to calculate correlation uh, with your target data. Then the mirrors, uh, also the vibration of space time, by a very, very tiny amount. It's about 10 times minus 21 meters. In other words, a 10,000th of the proton diam diameter. And one more thing I can tell you, uh, that's usually the signal is 100 times weaker than the background noise. So you definitely understand that gravitational wave data analysis is a crucial and essential part for us to find the gravitational wave signals. Well, how, uh, how we find the signals anyway? Typically, we use match filtering technique. However, it works optimally only on the Gaussian and the stationary noise, a background noise to extract uh, weak signals. And you also need to prepare a known signal, uh, a known template bank uh, to, to calculate correlation uh, with your target data. Then a threshold. A threshold is used on SNR 
for uh, templates for for templates capture uh, a target weak signal in the NoIV data. So you understand that the method match filtering technique is really computationally expensive. Okay, because for each NoIV data, you had to calculate a, a, a bunch of the temp, template uh, with, with, with a bunch of templates to calculate the correlation. Okay. Well, uh, we believe machine learning could handle these problems. Machine learning model can extract waveform features of gravitational waves and recognize the signals by interpolation and extrapolation on the parameter space of the template bank. Okay. In other words, here is the temp here here is the uh, uh, parameter space of the our template bank. Maybe we can train our model from this part, and uh, we can test our model in uh, between this part, which means interpolation. We can test our model uh, on this template. We can see okay, it means extrapolation generation. Uh, and during the testing stage, uh, machine learning can um, accelerate the existing search pipelines. Well, nowadays, some excellent researchers have demonstrated that uh, CNN's model works pretty good for the stimulated background noise on the performance comparing with the match filtering techniques. Well, based on that, we also can deploy the algorithm, I mean, the CNN on the real recording data, not just stimulated background noise, and uh, testing the model on the confirmed gravitational event. We can um, see. We, we're trying to see um, how the how the how the CNN uh, still works on the real LIGO data. However, uh, it does not work that well. When we scan uh, the first gravitational wave thing, uh, event with our model, it barely can see the signal. The, the true signal actually just right in the middle, in the middle of the figure. And the y axis is uh, means the output of the, our model from a sort math function, you know that. But uh, you, so, um, in other words, it's too it's too sensitive. It's too sensitive. It's too sensitive on the background noise. Actually, for now, no traditional uh, CNN structure can be used to recognize the real uh, gravitational event. So we realize that we need to design a specific model for this task. So. We propose our neural network. We call them MFCNN. It truly can signify the real gravitational wave event clearly from the real recording background noise. Well, how do we achieve that? The basic idea behind the model is uh, uh, naturally simple. Uh, mathematically, template in match filtering method and the kernels in the CNN are the same thing actually. They, they, uh, both of them are doing the correlation or convolution anyway. But match filtering, but match filtering uses the template feature to dig out the uh, weak signal hidden in the noises. But as as I have said previously, CNN with the auto feature extraction just can't do that. So why not we just prepare? pre-prepare the waveform as a feature for the CNN to, ex to extract. The performance should be improved undoubtedly. You know, we just help our CNN to find this feature. Okay. Uh, in practice, we, uh, we, we, we write the first convolution layer as a match of filters for the feature extraction. Uh, as first, we uh, try to cast the match filtering SNR, uh, the mathematical the formula is here, uh, from the frequency domain to the time domain to, uh, to find out the, our 
convolution operation here. Uh, and we compare the convolution operation here in the signal presenting with the convolution operator in MISNET. To be clear, I plot a figure to illustrate how the input data and the weight flow with one dimension uh, uh, convolution function in the MixNet. And then we can convert the convolution in signal processing to the, convolu to the convolutional layer in the deep learning framework. It may have some uh, technical details here, but you can recognize that cross-correlation, self-cross-correlation, and uh, uh, whitening, all of this can uh, have been represented as a convolutional layer here. And uh, by the way, wrapping here, wrapping here used to reduce the dimension of the output data. Okay, now we are ready. Uh, to present uh, uh, present you our the whole structure of the model. Uh, from the left, we input one sample of the input data as an example here uh, for uh, two detectors. Uh, the, and uh, the first three part are almost exactly the same with the match filtering techniques. We only prepare C template here as the templates, or in other words, as the kernels input uh, these two convolutional layers. Okay, at the end of the three, uh, the first three part, we calculate the maximum SNR for each template. You can see C is the template, and we just extract the ma maximum. And we call this feature response. Then we use the feature response data as the input to the traditional CNN structure. You can realize this part just a, uh, the traditional CNN part, two convolutional layer, and one hidden fully connected neurons here. Okay, and uh, well, by the way, uh, benefit from match filtering for each signal data, input data we can predict not only the probability here, but also the optimal arrival time of, of the thing alone. Okay. Uh, as you can see, we customize a match filtering layer in the MixNet as the first linear filter and a nonlinear operation cut hybrid layer to extract the feature response. Okay. And one more thing I need to tell you that for, simpli uh, for, simpl uh, for simplicity, we fix the weight here. We fix, we fix the weight in the machine learning, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the fixed layer in the match filtering layer here uh, during the training stage. And you, may, uh, you may curious about why we should do that. Actually, yes, we can uh, uh, update the template here uh, during the training stage, but we don't do that because uh, we need to demonstrate the physical meaning of the model at first. And the second thing is because uh, I have tried that actually. I tried to up update the, uh, the template here. Uh, uh, actually, there's no, uh, no such kind of uh, 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 clear improvement actually. Okay. Well, uh, okay, at the last slide, despite the uh, efficiency of our model, search gravitational wave, uh, gra gravitational signal on streaming data, I would like to highlight what we might learn from the algorithm uh, for the deep learning community. First, we use some kind of known features or known kernels in the convolutional layer for classification. Okay, that's the first things I need to uh, highlight here. And uh, the second thing you see, uh, we can truly build a bridge between the filters in the signal processing and the layers in the neural networks. Okay, and uh, finally, in our proposed model, 
we can clearly not only see the data flows, as you can see, the solid line is our URLA to de depict the model, how the data flows actually, okay? And, but also recognize the connection between the weight in each layers. Uh, as you can see from the figure, the dotted line represented represent the weight. Okay, and uh, and you can uh, compare that with uh, the traditional convolutional layer here. Our weight is not connected in each convolutional layers. Okay, uh, that's all, and uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, here is my profile and the printer. If you have any question, suggestion, or um, any any interest in the discussion or want to talk to me, you always can find a way to um, find a way to contact me. Okay, that's all. Thank you so. Thank you very much.